receiving God's guidance. How does God guide us? 2 Corinthians 13, 1, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. That means don't just take one of these areas. So I had a dream and then run away with it. God has promised to lead and guide us. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he will not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Now, don't think the Bible is prejudiced. When it says good man, it also includes women, right? <laughs> so the steps of a good person, good person are ordered. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. God says, I will instruct you, I will teach you, I will guide you. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. I like how the Good News Bible renders this verse. It says, those who have reverence for the Lord will learn from him the path they should follow. God's will is always consistent with his nature. That means God is not going to lead you, direct you, or direct me to do something that contradicts his own nature. God's will is always consistent with his words. God will not guide you or direct you and me in a way that contradicts his word. God's promises are a revelation of God's will. So the promise of God is also an expression of the will of God. God would not have promised it to us if he never willed for us to have it. God desires for us to know his will. That God is more than ready to reveal his will to us. There will be things that remain unknown. The Bible says the secret things belong to God. But those things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. That we may do all the words of this law. There's a realm that God says, look, I'm keeping this to myself. And so there will be in life's journey, the unknown, the unexplained. Are there different categories of God's will? Now, I came from a denominational church. And so one of these first things I heard was this. That there are three kinds, three categories of God's will. There is what is the good, there is the perfect, and there is the permissive, acceptable will of God. At Romans 12, 1 and 2, uh, because people use that to tell us that there are three categories, classifications to the will of God, which I want to clearly state it's not. There is only one, and it is the will of God. If it's not the will of God, then it is not the will of God. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Does that word acceptable means something less than holy or does it mean the same as holy? Same as holy, right? And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove, that is you understand, you examine, you test, you analyze, you discern, and you arrive at a conclusion. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what they used to teach us was, there are three classifications of the will of God. One is good, one is acceptable, which is permissive, and one is perfect. If I put an apple in front of you and I said the apple is red, it tastes sweet, smells good, are there three apples or one apple? That's what he's saying about the will of God. The will of God is good, acceptable, quickened words. It means now that as you and I are seeking God for something that is not already explicitly stated in the words, and he's saying, God, please speak to me, he will quicken a verse. He'll make a verse come alive to you. Job 32 verse 8, there is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. There's a spirit in you and God breathes and you get understanding. Okay God, I got it. The spirit of a man 
is the lamp of the Lord. What is a lamp used for? It's to light our path. It's to search for things. So verse 27 says, The spirit of man is a lamp of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the person.